everybody, welcome back to Minute on the Mountain. Uh, sorry, it's been a little while since I've put a video out. Just been super busy. And then the last couple of times I went fishing, it just wasn't very productive. Now, I, I am going to put some fishing footage on this one, but uh, even this trip, uh, you'll see we just weren't catching them like we normally do. Wanted to give you a little kind of channel update, some things I've been working on and some things that are coming up for you guys. First off, I created a couple of playlists. One for all of the wild game recipes and the fish recipes that I've done on my cooking videos. I've had several of you, as I've you know done one of those videos, say, man, I'd like to try that the next time I, I shoot a deer or the next time I harvest an animal. So to save you trying to you know look through all my videos and figure out maybe where that was, I created a playlist just for the wild game cooking. And then I also created a playlist for the Utah 29 shed tour. So if you remember a couple of years ago, I set out a goal that I wanted to find a shed in every county in the state of Utah. Still a long way from accomplishing that goal. In fact, I'm only about halfway there. But uh, each time I do find a shed in a new county for the first time, I've put that uh, in that video playlist as well. So I, I don't put every shed hunting video on that playlist and I don't put every video where I find a shed in that playlist just the first time I check off a new county is in that playlist. So anyway, that's kind of some updated information on the channel and on the playlist. The second thing I wanted to ask you guys is would it be interesting or beneficial or helpful to put more detailed information on my fishing videos about the, the lure that I'm using, you know, what size, what pattern, etc. about the rod and reel combo I'm using or anything like that. If if it doesn't really add anything to the video, I probably won't do it. But if some of you would find that helpful to know more about the lures that I'm using, I'd be happy to put that in there. So comment down below if you'd like me to add that. <clears throat> uh, big game hunting for this year. So Andrew has a muzzleloader deer tag. That season started earlier this week. We went out a half a day yesterday, a half a day today. That'll be on another upcoming video. I'll just tell you so far, no deer. Uh, we hunted pretty hard this morning. We saw a lot of deer, but they were all does and fawns. No bucks yet. And uh, with his work schedule, my work schedule, we've got two more days we're going to get to go out. So we'll see how that goes. And then my elk season starts in about a week. And uh, I'm going to take three days off of work and, and hunt really hard for those three days. So hopefully we can get some good footage and get something on film for you guys. <clears throat> excuse me and then after that about a week after that my son Caleb and I both have rifle deer tags for the cash unit so looking forward to being able to spend some time with him all right let's do the minute on the mountain for today I, I'm doing the third video since I started kind of going through the bible so we're in Leviticus <laughs> and that, that may have given you a collective groan if you know much about the book of Leviticus but I'm actually going from Leviticus chapter one and God is, is speaking to Moses. He's, he's giving him the instructions for all the Levitical law. And he starts out and he says, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When any one of you brings an offering to the Lord, you shall bring your offering of the livestock of the herd and of the flock. So a couple of things there. Number one, sacrifice has always been part of the covenant relationship that we have with God. The Israelites were never able to fully keep the Mosaic law. So there had to be a way to atone for their shortcomings. And so that was animal sacrifice. Now we know from scripture that that was just a foreshadowing to the perfect sacrifice of Jesus on the cross for our sins. The other thing that it points out there is that it had to come from the herd of the flock. They couldn't sacrifice a wild animal. Uh, they couldn't sacrifice you know, something they had found out in the wild or they had harvested in the wild because the sacrifice needed to have a cost with it. <clears throat> now, we don't still do sacrifice because, again, Jesus' sacrifice for us was perfect. But when we bring our offerings to the Lord, whether that's a financial offering, whether that's our praises, whether that's our obedience, there's the idea there that it, it should cost us something. Uh, there should be a cost to that. So anyway, that's Leviticus chapter 1. That's the Minute on the Mountain for today. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm fighting a little bit of a cold, guys, so sorry for my voice. So we're going to go ahead and jump now into uh, the fishing footage. Thanks so much for coming along. Again, sorry for the delay in getting the video out. I appreciate all your guys' support. God bless you, and we'll see you the next time right on the mountain.
All right, guys, first little brown of the day. Not a very big guy. We'll get him unhooked and get him back in the water. Guys, I'm almost embarrassed to show you that. Look at that minnow. <laughs> That's not as big as a lure for crying out loud. But we'll get it taken off and thrown back in the water. Another little tiny guy followed it right there at the very end. Where are all the big fish? That guy moved out of the way. <laughs> he didn't chase it any. It's been tough the last couple times I've been up here, guys. Between the fish not biting and camera issues, I haven't filmed much. Ah, oh, come on. Set the hook, John. It's tough enough when they're not biting, then when you finally get a bite and miss it. I watched him follow it all the way. There we go. Nope, lost another one. Maybe we'll make this into a blooper reel. <laughs> <laughs> 